Hi, I'm Q102's Brian Douglas, today from the studios of Broadway.com in New York City. I'm here in New York previewing the upcoming season of Broadway in Cincinnati. Going to be a great season, including The Lion King, Cinderella. Today we're going to talk to a guy that is basically, he does the book. And if you don't know what that is, we're going to explain that with Douglas Carter Bean. He has written the book for Cinderella. Again, Broadway in Cincinnati is going to be a great season. Describe what your portion of the whole process well, is. Well, the wonderful thing was Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote this for, as a television special. It was, when it broadcast in the 50s, it was the largest audience ever to see anything on television. Mm. Um, it was a huge success, and they immediately wanted to turn it into a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. They then wrote Sound of Music, which was their next thing, and then they were going to go work on Cinderella, and Oscar and Hammerstein passed away. Oh. So... They did it again on, Richard Rogers did it again on television with Leslie Ann Warren in the 60s, which is the one I grew up on, mm -hmm. where her garden somehow had Formica. That's all I remember <laughs> about that version. And then they did it again, uh, Richard Rogers passed away, and then they did it again uh, in the 90s with uh, Brandy and Whitney Houston. Oh, sure. Right. So it's, it's been a sort of television property. Then occasionally they would just sort of slap it together and put it on stage and give it a tour and, and make some money off of it because people love the title and love the song so much. I got a, uh, a call from Robin Goodman, the producer, and Ted Chapin, who is the, runs the Rodgers and Hammerstein estate, and said, we would like to turn this into a real, no kidding, Broadway musical. Mm. And I, so I had this, it's sort of three quarters of a score. Okay. And the rest of it, I had to kind of go and research and find old songs from other shows, mm. uh, or melody lines, and then a David Chase, who's a uh, just a freak and a genius when it comes to Rodgers and Hammerstein music, would concoct these songs and shape them in ways that Richard Rodgers would have approved. Oh. So it became a full score then when we opened in New York, and I gave it a, a second act. Uh, which was relatively easily done because I started going to original versions of Cinderella. There's a there's there's different versions. There's a Hans, there's a, a version by Poiret, a Poirot, who's a French writer, um, which is the one that Rodgers and Hammerstein based it on, and the one that Disney based it on. And what shocked me is what both those three guys, Disney in his version, and then Roger and Hammerstein in theirs, they, did, they cut out, was this really good stuff. Mm. Like, for example, one of the stepsisters became a friend to Cinderella. Right. Which I loved. It became like girl power. Right. 18th century girl power. <laughs> Come on. And then, it, and then they added, and then the other thing was that Cinderella actually met the prince three times. Mm. Which, in the original, uh, in, in the TV version, and in the film version, it's a little psychotic. She sort of meets him once and then he pursues her forever. Right. Whereas in this other version, she met him a couple times and they got to know each other and he became obsessed with um, her kindness. Mm -hmm. The last line of the French version, that I, when I read it, I said, that's, I can write the story, is kindness is more important than beauty. And it comes through it. Yeah, and I just thought to tell that as a father of a daughter, mm -hmm. to have that be the lesson you leave with, kindness is more important mm -hmm. than beauty. I thought, now that's a that in this with all the crazy that's going on in Absolutely. our world right now. Absolutely. To say no, it's kindness is the thing that's important. Absolutely. That's a, that's that's worth that's a worth worth hard work.